What's up, wild ones? Justin come at you from the tiny house in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So we've got a couple videos where we've looked after our little kitty friends, but today it's time to look after man's best friend and build a standing dog dish on Wild Rose DIY. I built this entire project using scrap wood I had laying around the garage. The first thing I did was found a piece that was long enough and wide enough to hold two of the dog's dishes. Pro tip, make sure your circular saw blade is hanging low enough to cut through your piece. Then I took one of the dog's dishes and just centered it on my piece. Once I was happy with where I had it, I just traced the outside of the dog bowl with my pencil. Then did the same thing on the other side. Now you're probably thinking if I cut this circle out, the dog dish is just gonna fall right through. And you'd be right. So what I'm gonna do is just try to find the exact center of both circles and use a compass to trace a quarter inch smaller than the circles we currently have. So the lip of the dog dish will just sit right on top. Then once I was happy that I had a good enough circle, I just took my drill, drilled out a hole, and then I took the jigsaw and cut out the circle. So I've got the same advice as the last video when we did the cat house. Just take your time cutting out these circles. It was a little luckier on this one because it didn't have to be as exact because the dog dish is gonna cover up the holes, but you still wanna make sure that the dog dish is making contact as much as it can. I don't have an oscillating sander yet, so I just took a sanding drum and put it on the end of my drill to try to even out these cuts as best as I could. Once I was happy with that, it was time to go over to the chop saw and start cutting out the legs and the stretchers. And for those, I just used these 2x2 two two pieces. They're really cheap at your local big box store and they come in 8 foot lengths. I don't even think I used one and a half for this entire project. Once I had those cut down, then I could start putting together the side leg pieces. I just cut a stretcher to go between these legs and mounted it two inches up from the bottom on either side. You may have seen in some of my other videos when I'm working with this stuff, is I like to use my 3 8 pocket hole bit to drill my pilot holes. Then I can just drive a screw through that and cover it up with a 3 8 dowel. So whenever I use these 2x2 two two pieces, I always make sure to use wood glue as well. If you don't, then you'd actually be able to spin the pieces around since you can only actually fit one screw into it. Since I'll be screwing into the end grain of the wood, I like to make sure I have a pilot hole first so I don't split anything. Just a quick tip, make sure you check for square as you're building, because if one thing gets out of square, it's just gonna make everything more difficult down the line. So now that I got the side legs together, I'm just gonna take my palm router and put a rabbit in the stretcher. These rabbits are gonna make sure that my slats are nice and flush at the bottom. So as you can see, my bit is not quite wide enough to accommodate the entire slat. So now I'm just gonna adjust my router and take another pass at it. Much better. So now that I have the rabbits cut in my stretchers, I can go ahead and attach them to the side pieces using the same technique as before. Just drilling a 3 8 pilot hole and gluing and screwing.
So now that the main structure is together, we can cut our slats. In this case, I think I cut them about eight and a half inches. Then I just attach those using a little bit of wood glue and my brad nailer. Then I just use a bit of scrap wood I had as a spacer and the spacing ended up working out perfectly. Now that I had all that together, I could just do some stretchers for the top part as well. I had some 3 inch wide planks laying around that I ended up using, as those were just enough to cover the bottom of the dog dishes. Then I used my handy Craig pocket hole jig to put some pocket holes on the ends of the stretchers, and also some pointing upwards so I could screw the very top off. Then once I had all the pocket holes drilled, I just took my round over bit to the bottom part of the stretcher, just to round over the edges. Then I could take my stretchers, put a little glue on them, and just line them up with the edges of the legs. You may notice that the stretcher is flush with the back of the leg in this shot, but then in this shot it's flush with the front. This is because when I put the dog dishes in they didn't quite fit, so I just had to move the stretchers a little. Then I just put a little bit of glue on the top and I was able to put my top on. I just used my tape measure to make sure it was nice and even on all sides. Then I clamped it down and used those pocket holes that I had drilled previously to drill some screws in. Then I took my palm router and just gave it a nice rounded over top. Before I started sanding the whole thing, I had to fill in all my holes with a 3 8 dowel. So just the same as I usually do, just a little bit of wood glue, put it in there, cut it flush. Then once you sand it, they look... So before we put our stain on, I just took the shot back and just sucked up all the little bits of sawdust that were on there. Then as always, I used a little bit of Verithane wood conditioner first and let that soak in for about 20 minutes or a half an hour. Then I could stain it with some dark walnut stain. Then once that was dry, I just used this triple layer varnish spray. Since I knew the dog would probably drool water all over this thing, I actually hit it with two coats of this, with a light sanding in between. That gave me a really nice finish. Then once that was dry, it was time to customize this a little bit for Rolo. So Rolo's owner Elizabeth has a Cricut machine, so she just designed and cut out these awesome little vinyl labels for Rolo's dog dish stand.
So this design has room for two dishes, obviously, but I left lots of room underneath for a Tupperware full of the dog's food. Now it's time to see what the harshest critic thinks. I think Rolo is very pleased. So that's it for this one guys. This one took very little time, very little investment. It was really cheap to make. So I think this is a great little project and uh, I know the dog loves it. He has been just staring at it and walking around it and I feel like he's been using it a lot more than normal too. If you guys like what you saw, pile drive that like button, slam that subscribe button, help a brother out and uh, we'll see you on the next video on Wild Rose DIY. Stay. Stay. Sit. Stop. Oh.